The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the May, May, the June 13th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, just like Dennis G. did here. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, I get all the U.S. indices trading the downside. Dow's up 722 points, about two and three tenths percent. A little over three percent for the S&P, or 122 points. Nasdaq 100, three and six tenths percent, 431. Russell 2000 is off 76 or four percent, nearly 4.6 percent. That's 129 points for the semis. Trenders are only down two and six tenths percent, or 347. Gold is uh, getting schmacked. It's down 44 bucks, off two and three tenths. Silver down three and a quarter percent, or 71 pennies. Light sweet crude is up 99 cents, 121.66 is the print there. You got natural gas off 26. You got the 30 year treasury down three points right now, 132.20. So we got plenty to look at, but then uh, I want to look at what you want to look at. We do have one request, which is to take a look at Google. Let's uh, do come back to Google either towards the end of this uh, segment or the beginning of the uh, next segment. Let's, in fact, uh, start taking a look at what's going on. Bigger, maybe slightly bigger picture out here. Let's start with the index ETFs. This is something everybody, if you do any kind of charting, everybody's got access to this. And then we'll go take a look at the future contracts, some numbers that you can write down on a pad of paper. But as we take a look at what's going on right now, you've got the SPY that's going against that May 20th swing point. Now, that May 20th swing point has 131 million shares. I don't know where we're going to end today's volume. It's really going to be dependent upon that last hour of trade out here. However, if price closes below 380.54, this is on the SPY, even with light volume out there, that's going to suggest that we had lower. If it's with volume, well, then it's just going to tell us that we have the existing A to B equals CD that's in place that's going to be extending its price projection level. Remember, on the A to B equals CD pattern, you've got the 1 to 1, the 1 1.272, the 1 to 1 1.618, and uh, you got the uh, 2 level out there. If we take a look at the Qs, they are also trading below their May 20th swing point. The volume on that May 20th swing point is about 92 million shares so far. At uh, nearly four hours of trading, we've done about 52 million. The Dow Diamonds have tested and so far rejected the May 20th swing point. Now, the volume that it needs to deal with, it's dealing with, is 4.6 million shares. We're at 2.8 right now. Again, not sure what the volume is going to look like at day's end. You could get a official rejection with lighter volume inside the Dow Diamonds. Now, if you did get that, what, would, what we would be looking at is a move up to about the 318-ish level, 318 to 321. But actually, price would first have to get above the bottom of that profile, 310.50. In the case of the Russell 2000, or the IWM, I should say, price has not gotten all the way down there. At least I don't believe it has. The low today, 169.29. 168.90 is the actual low bit swing point, which is May the 12th, I believe. Yeah, May the 12th out there. 
volume here, 23 million versus 52 million shares. So it looks like the Russell is moving down with lighter volume out there. The other ones I can't uh, truly say whether they are or they aren't. But you want to pay attention to that come day's end. If we take a look at the sectors within inside the S&P 500, that might be a good place to go. What sectors are behaving well or not? If we take a look at the XLK, the number one weighting, it's dealing with its swing point at 127.04. That's the low for May 20th. Now, the volume on May 20th, oh, man, I've got to get these data boxes in here. Um, the reason I took them out was because it just clogged everything up when these things were so small. So the low is 127.04. Well, I knew that. It's the volume. 10 million shares. Nope. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, oh, 10.1 million shares. Okay. So this helps us. We can see that the XLK, the number one sector inside the S&P 500, is absolutely pushing lower with volume out there. So a close below that is going to, that's 127.04, is going to suggest lower price. A rejection, meaning a close back above that, says that we're likely at least back down there to test that. Now, that next test could be on lighter volume. If you take a look at the healthcare sector, it's trading below its swing point, which was from May the 12th, similar to the Russell 2000. That's at 125.28. Let's get that data box going just so we can take a look at the volume metric there. On that swing point, Day, there were 17 what was it uh 17.5 million shares you're only at 7.7 .7. so likely the xlv is going to close below its swing point but still do it with lighter volume that does not mean you can't see lower price but at least the xlv is saying hey i'm not doing it with volume out here the xlf the financial sector Let's get that data box going so we can compare volumes out here. We can see that price is trading below its swing point. That's the swing point for May 20th. That did volume about 77.9 million shares. We're at 51.7 as we speak right now. So hard to say if it's going to clear that with volume. But if you're trading below that, it closed below 32, 23 odds favor lower price. If we take a look at the consumer discretionary sector, price is trading inside that swing point. That swing point again being May, well, not again, being May 24th as its low. Let's take a look at its volume matrix out here. The volume currently is at about 4.9 million shares. That swing point has volume of 7.4 million shares, 7.5 million shares. So not clear. Uh, now, you, you would get a rejection with a close above 139.51 on the consumer discretionary area uh, as, long as, price, uh, as long as the volume is less than 7.4. 4 million shares out there. The communications sector is trading below its swing point. That swing point taking us back to the May 24th time frame. Let's take a look at its volume makeup out here. The current volume is 3.5 million shares. It's going against 8.5 million shares. So it's only the technology sector so far that I think we can say with conviction that it's testing that swing point with volume. The other sectors so far are, are, appear not to be doing the same. The industrial sector, that's trading into its swing point. That swing point for May the 20th, 8803 is the key number. So far, it has rejected that level. If we take a look at the volume today, which is 7.9 million shares, it's going against 15.6 million shares. Interesting. So here's another sector testing that swing, doing it on lighter volume. So far, what's that? What that's saying to you and I is really what we should do is take a look at the technology sector, the XLK. So maybe what we can do, we come back to this break. Well, first, we're going to take a look at Google. And that's really the uh, segue into let's look at the top nine or ten instruments inside the NDX 100, since it's really the technology sector that's moving lower with volume. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Now down 714. S&P's up 122. NASDAQ 100, 430. And that's the area that we're headed to. We're going to take lay at Google for Dennis G. Dennis writes in. He says, what is support for Google? Looking to buy some. So there's a couple different levels of support that we can look at. The first would be TAS market profile as well. Price is trading below the bottom of its profile, so it's below support on a daily basis. Dennis, that was at 2248. We take a look at the weekly time frame. Price is trading below support there. That was at 22.28. So we had 22.48. This is 22.28 on the weekly. So we're trading below that. So therefore, the next support area would be the monthly profile areas. And price is trading, in essence, inside a support zone. The monthly chart has a bullish structured profile. That is what I mean by that. The bottom of the profile is where we have buyers that are lined up. The top of the profile is where sellers are lined up. The center is where both buyers and sellers believe, in this case here, Google, is fairly valued in between that range. And that is at 2176, we're at 2162. So it's right around that fair range level. The, the support area is really between 1959 and 2176. So that helps us and says, okay, we have to go look for bottoming signals out there. And if we come back to the weekly time frame, you will see that four weeks ago, one, two, three, four weeks ago, that price completed a buy the D point pattern, also a Gartley buy pattern. Now it completed it at the 1.272 level. Really price almost got down to the 1.6 area. The reason that I say it was completed was because it was completed with a bullish hammer candle from a weekly standpoint. That was week of May 23rd. Now it is now three weeks since that candle formation. If I were to teach you how to buy a hammer candle, especially one with as long of a wick as this is, when I say long wick, I'm talking about between the price range of 2044 all the way up to the um, 2202 level out there. So it's pretty big. But there is a theory. It's a good theory, by the way. Uh, if you're trying to buy a hammer candle that you want to buy it on 
bars three through seven following the actual hammer candle. In this case here, it happens to be weeks three through seven. And you're trying to buy it in about the midway point of that bar, between midway point all the way down to the bottom of that level. So what do you do now? Because we're sort of at the midway point. You know, what you do is you'd go take a look at, well, first you have to consider market conditions, mm -hmm. right? And so we spent the first segment there, Dennis, talking about market conditions, possibly price closing below key swing points, maybe doing that with volume. If it does that, that's going to suggest lower price. So do we really want to step in here if the tide is really going against us? And that's the larger question that you and I have to answer. But if we just talk specifically about Google, we, dis we disregard the market activity, not a good thing to do, but if we do it, then what we have to do is go try to figure out, you know, is there some kind of other bottom signal? Now, I would say based upon the market movement here, we would just simply, before we even go to our multi time frame charts out here, really doesn't the daily tell us something here? It does. Price is potentially pulling back to another hammer candle. It's the daily hammer candle out there. So like if it was now, this is going to be way beyond bars three through seven out here, but that is a level of support as well. And so that says that low from the trading day of May 24th out there, that's another potential area of support for you, 2044. Now that's a swing point that if it were tested with less than 3 million shares, which means a close, which means a move below 2044.16 and a close back above it with lighter volume, that could be a buy area. Now price is not made its way into that swing point just yet. In order to do that, Dennis has got to at least get down to 21.2755. Now the volume on that day was fifth uh, was uh, three million shares. So far today, only 890,000 shares. So there's not a lot of sellers in Google. So I do believe you are in the right spot. The question is just simply a timing standpoint. So ideally, worst case scenario. You'd at least like to get a test of 21.2755, close back above that level with more with less than three million shares. That could be your trigger into it. Now let's go to the white time frame charts out here. And on the white time frame charts, what are we going to see? I don't know. We're going to go look. And on the white time frame charts, we're going to see on a monthly basis a TD9 count top, roads to indicator top, a price inside that buy zone. On a weekly basis, that hammer candle that we took a look at, that was a confirmation. We looked at the A to B equals CD pattern. That was a confirmation of that Gartley buy. But now what we also know, and this is really important for all of us, is that price was able, valid bottom, and what did price do? It made its way up to that red oscillator and change line last week. And being below red oscillator and change line is never a good scene out there. But you do have support, and that's at that low of both the daily and the weekly hammer candles out there. On a daily basis, no additional information, but it does suggest at least waiting to see if price can get down to that 2127 level. And below that, it could be the bottom of its hammer candle that you'd be looking at. The 130 minute chart, the 65 minute chart, do not show any kind of bottoming signals out there. So they support waiting. The 30 minute chart has just had a counter trend move. Just like the equity futures have had counter trend moves out here, price just simply running into resistance. In the case of Google, on a 30 minute time frame, that happens to be at the 2176 level. So, Dennis, I hope uh, I provided you with the information that you're looking for. Thanks for taking the time to write in. And I think at this stage here, a little patience would be warranted. Now, let's go switch over back to the black background charts. Uh, while we have a couple of moments here, and there's no other requests that are in just yet, let's go take a look at some of the other stocks that make up the uh, heavy weighting inside the NDX 100 in the top nine stocks out here. We begin with Apple. Apple's low today is 132.57. Its swing point low is 132.61. We've done 66 million shares versus 137 million shares. Apple may be giving you a test and rejection of its swing point out there. That says, and if that's the case, expect or anticipate some type of counter trend move. Microsoft is trading below its swing point. That's a swing point from May 20th. That did volume of 39 million shares. You're only at 19 million shares. Again, it appears to be lighter volume. But nonetheless, so what you need to see in Microsoft is a full rejection. And that's at 246.44. Now, look, I can't tell you what the end of day volume is going to be. We could just look at it as we see it right now. We could divide it by four, multiply times 6.5, come up with a number. That's not even a fair way to do it. You just want to look at it come day's end. But Microsoft right now appears to be testing that swing point. It's trading below that swing point on lighter volume. Amazon is inside its swing point. That's from the trading session of May 24th, which is a volume of 102 million shares. And so far today, you're at 59. 
That clearly looks like light volume. But what Microsoft or Amazon has, has not done is actually test the low. The low would be 101.26. It's gotten down to 101.86. Nonetheless, if price could close above 105.40, that would be a test rejection of that swing point and say anticipate a counter trend move inside of Amazon. By the way, the counter trend move inside of Apple would target 139.47. A move higher inside of Microsoft to be 255.86. Amazon, it'd be 118.22. That takes us to Tesla. Tesla's testing its swing point. Its swing point was from May 24th. The volume there was 29 million shares. You're at 24. So Tesla's moving into that swing point with volume. Even if price closes above the top of that swing at 653.53, it would suggest that we get back down and we test that level. Google, we've already covered. In the case of NVIDIA, NVIDIA's swing point that is tested is 155.67. It's only gotten to 156.60 today. Volume on that swing, 70 million. You're only 36 right now. I think what we've established here, at least these top six instruments, for the most part, volume pulling back here with lighter volume, but it's that end of day surge that we just don't know about. Sea roads with TF and N. Right now. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got Dow down, down 730, S&P's up 124, NASDAQ 100 down 439. We're sticking with the NASDAQ 100 because that's the next question that has come in. This is from Rick Kay. Rick writes in, hey, Steve, uh, can you provide an entry point for Amazon? 
Um, so we were just speaking about Amazon, and what we know about that, Rick, uh, is that price is trading inside its swing point. The swing point that we're looking at is May 24th. So you're kind of in neutral territory out here. Now, if price closes back above 105.40, that's the top of the swing point, and today's volume is less than 102 million shares, a likely possibility, since we're only at 60 right now, that would be a test rejection, and that would be from a just a trade standpoint, at least at this stage of the game, a signal into a long position. Can't say it's a long-term position, just a long position, with the resistance at about 118.22 to 122.53. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it also completed a buy the D point. It did that when it created a both a hammer candle and a bull sash candle. Let's expand this out. The hammer candle is right here. That's a trading day of May the 9th. Now that low is 102.41. And the low so far today is 101.86. Now, that's not the swing point low, but that was tested and rejected. That was tested and rejected with, well, that's a weekly chart, so I can't really come up with volumes for that. But so far, uh, support there is holding. Now, a counter trend move uh, would find that price has also held its rising trend line support level. But I think you really want to get your signal at this stage here, well, at least a signal from the daily time, daily time frame, and you just don't have it. And even if I pull over to the daily chart, which I will, the daily chart shows a nice Rogemintum indicator bottom that price is trading back into. It shows wave number seven, that's letter G, so it got two bottoming patterns out there. But you just have to wait and see what happens with that swing point for May 24th. If you close below it, even if it's with lighter volume, that would be suggesting a further move lower. If you test it with lighter volume, that says you get a bounce to 110, 20 or so, or 118. So I think with regard to giving you an entry point, we first need the chart or we need the uh, buyers and sellers when they're dealing with this swing point to provide you and I with that information. And we just don't have it at 1.32 in the afternoon. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Nico writes in and says, hey, Steve, you mentioned buying a hammer candle on uh, candles three through seven after hammer. This first time I've ever heard you say that. Uh, that's because you probably haven't attended one of my workshops where I have said that when we take a look at a bullish and bearish reversal candle. So, Nick, if you are a subscriber, uh, go ahead and watch the uh, the uh, workshop uh, that's uh, on the members page uh, that deals with candlesticks. Uh, I, I, I would be fairly certain I'd be surprised if I don't discuss it there. If you're not a subscriber, and eh, you might want to uh, consider uh, giving that a shot for at least 29 days or so. So, yeah, that's just a that's an old rule out there, but it's an old rule that has really stood the test of time. It is typically, again, on bars three through seven, uh, and you're trying to buy it at that uh, midpoint. Um, and, and I say that's a, it's a test of time. That's been around for a long, long time out there. So uh, you heard me say it now. Uh, but you've got to, you want to, you just can't just do it plainly and blindly out there. I've just given you the ideal time frame uh, in a hammer candle. And then you've got to be able to find the patterns. And with regard to Google, I think that's what we were talking about, Nico, uh, is that, uh, you know, we don't have that bottom signal, at least not just yet. So uh, thanks for taking the time to write in. Hope that helps you out, and uh, let's see, no other questions at this stage of the game. Uh, I don't believe that there is anything inside the Tiger's Den. Oh, there, oh, I take that back. There's what might be a private message. There is. Okay. Uh, from Peter, can you look at the daily, weekly, monthly on the ES? Absolutely. Thanks for the question. Let me make sure I'm on the right spot here. So let's go to that multi time frame set of charts out here as soon as I can find them. What the heck? Where the heck did it go? This is not going to be it. Taz Weekly. I've got the NQ, the YM, the Russell 2000. Well, I'll be a son of a gun out here. I mean, we're going to do it no matter what. It's just that I have a set of charts out here for it. and it, Oh, there we go. Okay. It's just a little bit out of whack. So here we go, Peter. Um, let me uh, let's get this clean. This set of charts here cleaned up just a tad. Um, let's get rid of the A to B equals CD patterns inside the daily time frame out there. Um, 
We can talk about those. Let's get rid of the trend lines inside the weekly time frame out here. Not that they're not helpful, but they're just cluttering the message of the ES Mini at this stage here. So let's get rid of those trend lines. Let's turn those off for the moment. We'll leave the uh, monthly on our chart, and we've got the uh, we've got the quarterly out here. Perfect. Okay. So with regard to the daily time frame, if price closes below its swing point, now. Here on this chart, because I'm using Peter, I'm using my synthetic version. It shows 3807. The low is 3810 on the uh, December, I'm sorry, on the uh, September contract for the ES Mini. You get a close below uh, that level, 3810 out there. That suggests we have another A to B equal CD price projection level to look at. So there's a couple different ways we can do A to B equal CD patterns out here, and neither are wrong. But sometimes it's uh, it's more helpful to me when you get these potential multiple A to B equals CD patterns in place to look at some larger time frames. And here is the weekly time frame. And the weekly time frame shows that price is now approaching the 1.272 level. Now, if at week's end, it's just Monday, but if at week's end price closes below the low of the week that began May 16th, let me get that for you on the actual September contract. If you give me a moment to do that. Where is that at? Maybe that's here. It's not there. Maybe it is. Ah, oh, geez, I've got it. I had it. I had it out, but it's right here. Equity futures. Perfect. Okay. So the level here on a what was I? What was I just doing? That I need to now look for it. Boy, that that's really that's really smooth, Stevo. Um, hmm. Well, so let's go back. Let's go back to uh, maybe if I redo it, I'll remember exactly what I was going to say out there. So back here, so you've got. Oh, oh I was trying to give you the low from that uh, May sixteenth level out there. If we get a close, well, that's that's probably that's the May twenty fourth. That's the May twentieth. So that's that. That's the same level out there of the uh, thirty eight ten area. So weekly close below thirty eight ten. Is going to negate its weekly by the D point pattern. Now, price right now, as you can see, is approaching the 37.32 ish area. That is its 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. So, close below that, uh, not on the one days, but on a weekly basis, below the low of that week that began May 16th is going to suggest we head down lower. And you've got the different price projection levels. Now, you can also come back to the ES Mini, and certainly you can take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern along the C to D level leg. Is there anything right or wrong with doing that? What I would do is I would say do not get married to it. Take a look at the larger pattern. The smaller pattern out here, that would be or the, a to, the C to D leg would be starting with the high from May 29th March 29th, the low out here, the that uh, May 20th level, and then your C point being the high from May 31st out there. That would give you a one to one price projection of 33.78. But if that's the only thing you focus on, you're going to miss the bigger picture out there. And that's why, uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. That's why we're taking a look at that larger A to B equals CD, which we could draw on the daily time frame. But it's just easier to have, uh, let's look at the daily separate from the weekly out there. And now maybe your real answer to your, or the real question you were going to ask is where's the next level of support? That's coming from the monthly time frame profile. And that's at about 3703. That's about 70 points below where we're trading. And if we get it close below that, where's the next area of support? That would be at 35.39, and that comes from the quarterly profiles for the ES Mini. I hope that provided you with the information you're looking for, Peter. If not, just a big key again. She wrote the TMNF. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be 
be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. I still have the uh, spinny charts up on our screen. The reason is I wanted to. Uh, so it gave you the different support levels out there, monthly, quarterly. Uh, quarterly, again, the support level being 3539. Now, if that level gets broken, the target becomes confluence. Now, David White talks a lot about confluence, part of uh, the art of timing the trade charts out there has got that built in. So it's a very cool calculation. Tom just did a workshop where I'm certain that he talked about confluence there. And here we've got the larger time frame chart up on our screen. And it's a beautiful thing with regard to confluence. And why is that, Steve-O? Pretty simple. If we come back to the ES Mini, we come all the way back down to the lows of January of 2029. Again, we're looking at a quarterly time frame out here. So if we go from the lows then all the way up to the highs in 2021, and we do a retracement, the 0.382 retracement sits at 3122. The next set of swing points that we would use to identify confluence would be the lows from 2020, March of 2020. Well, that's going to show up as the January time frame on my uh, uh, time bar out there. And if we start from that low all the way to the all-time high, the 0.61 retracement is at 31.31. So we're talking about a narrow range between – we're talking about a, a an 11-point range mathematically from something going from 408 – to 47.99, pretty amazing. So the real area to truly be watching on a further move lower, and Peter's asked me some additional questions, so we're going to go to those charts out there. But keep that 31.31 level in mind out here. What Peter was asking is if we could go to those larger time frame charts, and I appreciate looking at the larger time frame charts, and uh, take a look for any kind of TD9 count breakout areas. Well, here what I've got is on the top portion that you're looking at is the S&P 500. And again, this is just our larger time frames. The bottom happens to be the ES Mini for those same time frames out there. So 
on a so you've got the yearly, which uh, Peter wasn't that interested in, but you've got the monthly. So the monthly breakout level for the S and P 500 is 37.23. The weekly is at 38.19, which is under pressure right now. So 38.19, if that fails on a weekly basis, Peter says 32.79. But you know the game plan here. Price first has got to break below or close below 37.23. But if you do get below 37.23, then you're looking at 32.79 out there. On the S&P 500 for the daily basis, I just use those A to B equals CD. Even though we use the weekly time frame, they would work out to be the same thing out there. On the ES Mini, the level you'd be looking at, now this is the continuous contract, is at about 36.76 on the monthly time frame. That says, uh, and, and that on the weekly time frame, it's 37.52. So 37.52 is the... Uh, I'd have to say is the really key level to be watching. So close to that 36.76 uh, area out there, which has likely already been. No, it hasn't been tested just yet. Um, so those would be the levels that I'd be watching, Peter. So hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request out there. And uh, you have a, a great day. We've got a caller on the line. Uh, give me a second here. And uh, we're going to go to our caller. It is, uh, oh, you've got John. In uh, Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Steve, I'm doing very well. Hope you're doing the same, man. Thank you for taking the call. My Steve, pleasure. I wanted to ask you to please uh, pull up the daily and weekly charts on your different tools on, a, on ticker symbol LQD. That, that would be an investment-grade corporate bond ETF. It's been around forever. Um, I have, I've never called at, oh, excuse me, I've never asked you about this ticker symbol uh, for quarters, if not years, but the price action is something I'm interested in and wanted to see if you can share with me what uh, your chart uh, <clears throat> parameters are for daily and weekly, please. Absolutely. So from a daily standpoint, today is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. That says that there should be a completion of this pattern. There will be a completion of this pattern come tomorrow. If we do get a uh, TD9 count bottom that has some traction, John, then the first upside target out here would be about 111.11. That's the current calculation of the oscillator and change line. Maybe slightly different come tomorrow or whatever. It would likely be different. If price can clear that level, then we'd be looking for price to head up to the bottom of its daily profile, which is at 113.69 out there. John, any questions about the daily chart before I switch over to the weekly chart for you? So far, so good. Thank you. Perfect. So now if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart for LQD out here, again, we're looking for some type of bottoming signal. The only thing that I have would be a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that has been triggered. What it needs, though, is it needs a bullish reversal candle. So today was a gap to the downside. You know, the ultimate, or this is on a weekly basis, the ultimate signal would be next week a gap to the upside, giving you an island bottom out there. No, no idea if that's going to take place. So the only bottom pattern that is present is a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal, and that's going to need a bullish reversal candle. And in that matter, that likely says you wouldn't see that uh, take place until uh, next uh, next week out there. So that's what the week looks. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to close it. I meant to ask you the question. Any questions about this weekly chart that I am sharing with you? Uh, Steve, so far so good. Thank you for that. I might just ask this, yes, and uh, then I'll depart. And thank you. Uh, if you might put this on your watch list uh, this week, and if you see something of that that uh, perks your sure. interest, uh, share that on your show. But uh, I'd be much obliged if you could do that. So thanks, Steve. I'll be happy to do that. John, thanks so much for the call. Let's go to our next caller. It is Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. How are you? I am doing excellent. Did you have a nice weekend? I did. I did some fishing yesterday. I had a really good day doing that. And then, yeah, just very enjoyable weekend. How about you? Perfect, perfect. I, I did as well. I uh, got a nice round of golf yesterday. That's always uh, nice. And, uh, yeah, just a pretty much enjoyable weekend, a good day, a good a good, uh, good weekend for uh, for beach weather out here. Um, but uh, I know you called to talk about, is it is the ticker symbol CYN? Is that what we're going to look at? That's correct. Okay. Um I'm not sure why my, my, my charts here aren't, 
give, give, they're giving me some weird information out here. Was there a big gap to the downside? The, on there, a weekly there basis? There was this one, yeah, I actually had, uh, that's what I was calling about. I did buy in this morning. There was a point where I had a gap up back on April 21st. Okay. And I, I kind of missed that day. I was going to buy it at a buck seventy-five, and it ran up to five, or actually six something, I think. And so I've just been patiently waiting for it to come back and close that gap, which it finally did today. And of course, on much lighter volume, and it just it completed an AB equals CD. I and mean, there's just a bunch of things that kind of made sense. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Looking at your chart, of it necessarily yeah. looks. There's, yeah, there's I'm something not sure that, about that monthly chart. That, that I don't know. I'm not sure about. Yeah, uh-uh. and 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 it's uh, and the problem is I'm getting that on my black background charts as well. So we'll skip the monthly time frame out here. And I'm not that I don't know what I can do while I'm live on the show to try to correct that. But so what what is the specific question? Is so if I, see if I can get you that information. Yeah, it would just be I guess I, I'm in this now. We'll see where it closes. But I mean we're having a nice you know reversal candle today and. Just yes. wondering what levels now that it's hopefully going to start going back the other way to be watching as far as you know, resistance and things to be watching to that direction, hopefully. Perfect. OK, so when we come back from this break, we're going to take a look at the charts of CYN with Brent. We're going to give him the resistance levels we can see on a daily basis here, folks. The first one is up at about the 210 area, but we'll confirm that when we get back from this break. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. Now, Brent told us that he did some fishing this weekend. And, of course, many of us thought that uh, what he was fishing for was actually fish. I think it was fishing in the stock market. Because when he talked about CYN pulling back to fill up his gap, what he didn't say was, Steve-O, did you see that breakout that this had on a daily basis back on the trading day of April 21st? The volume there, folks, was 221 million shares. On an average daily basis, this does like about three or four million shares. So, Brent, what was it? What have these guys done? What was it behind that gigantic move on April 21st? Do you know? I can't tell you exactly, Steve. I just know they're in an area that's kind of interesting. They're in the autonomous driving, you know, that, that okay. area of of uh, the market. So, and I'm not sure what it was that day in particular that sent it on that move, and it continued on for oh, you know, multiple days after that. So, yeah, it just and then of course I've been waiting to see if it ever could come back and close that gap. Yeah. It did, and so yeah, thought I'd take a chance. Okay, so this fish is going to try to spit out the hook when it gets to $2.30. And that's on the daily time frame chart. And 2.30 is the TD9 count breakdown area. It also happens to be the bottom of its old daily profile. It's really still profile that exists out there. That's at 2.28. So 2.28 to 2.30 is going to be your resistance level. Now, there's one other resistance level. I'd mentioned 2.10. It's really 2.11. And 211 comes from the center of the weekly profile. So this has closed below the bottom of its weekly profile for more than two consecutive weeks. And that always says that if it's just a counter trend move where price should find resistance would be at the center, that's at 211. So what you're looking for is if price can clear 211, uh, and that your fish still has a hook in its, uh, you know, in its mouth out there, it's gonna try to spit it out when it gets to 230. But if it closes above 230, you know, then you've got a, a real nice treasure here, Brent. So uh, nice uh, nice fishing out here in the stock market. And uh, thanks for the call. I, I, sorry that we're running out of time. But hopefully we can talk again soon. All right, my friend? All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Take care. You bet. That was Brent DeMartinez, California. Folks, stay tuned. Two more great hours are up next.